This podcast is brought to you by Gross Busters Power Washing. With over 15 years of experience, we ensure you get the outcome you desire. Locally owned and operated, call us today, 520-955-0161, or visit azgrossbusters.com. Dove Mountain Epoxy Floor specializes in residential garage floors. They provide superb craftsmanship in a timely manner. Their floors are durable, sleek, and pristine. Get a free quote today at 520-429-8170 or visit DoveMountainEpoxy.com. Hey, good morning and welcome to another episode of Local Marana with Mayor Ed Honey. Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Clint. Another shirt. Repping the shirt, repping the shirt, you know, repping I, the like shirt. Like I said, I have to promote my uh, community that, that I love working in so uh, and living in. But uh, what a great day. Yeah. A little chilly. What a great day. A little chilly. You know, this is paradise. It is. It is. I say that all the time. You, know, you look around the country and, and uh, they're freezing rain and yeah. snow and ice and all that kind of stuff. And you walk outside here and if you got a light jacket on, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I want to say in addition to being the mayor, mm-hmm. Mr. Honey is also the biggest cheerleader Miranda has probably ever had. <laughs> right is that well, well you, a, a you lot of say times that, if i'm modesty, speaking but. at an event it's hi my name's ed honey i'm the head cheerleader for the <laughs> town of moran he, he means it which brings us perfectly to what you want to discuss this morning doesn't what it? i'd like to talk about today clint is the chamber of commerce and uh, working partners and how we all work together in this community and how we have grown together and how we serve each other uh, the Miranda Chamber of Commerce started many, many years ago. I want to say in the late, uh, m- mid to late 80s, really formally. The uh, town was incorporated in 77. And a group of business people got together. The first uh, CEO for, or uh, president and CEO of the Miranda Chamber was a lady named Phyllis Faringa who ran Pestex, which was a, uh, you know, a mobile uh, spray mm-hmm. group, and uh, she ran that business. The person that was probably the most active to get the chamber started was a lady named Betty Horgan. Betty and her husband, Hal, owned the Miranda Market for 25 years. And a group of those people got together, even the late Ora Harn kind of got involved in some of that mm-hmm. stuff and, and a lot of other really good people. And it was, we need to get together and kind of form a business group and how can we promote Marana and how can we promote business and everything else. And that's how they got it off the ground. Uh, Betty and her husband even rented a little place that the chamber used. Chamber didn't have any money. They were business people. And they, they rented a little building for the chamber to be in and kind of get started. And, and that's kind of how it got rolling. Uh, Betty later ran for and served a a term on the Miranda Town Council. Then she chose not to run and later applied for a job at the Miranda Police Department, and she ran the records department for the town of Miranda for 20 years at Mm -hmm. PD and wasn't a real political person or anything like that and just loved the town and and what we did here. Uh, The next executive director was a guy named Nelson Sabe. And uh, he was the first director that actually got a little bit of income for what he was doing. And I'll tell you how we did that. Uh, Nelson Sabe was a uh, part-time pastor and kind of a a local, uh, you know, kind of headed a local group of people and, and things that were going on in Miranda and the Ever Valley. And uh, the town didn't have a bunch of money back then. And, of course, the chamber didn't have any other than just what their few members put into it. Is the town hired the chamber to manage our CDBG block grants, community development block grants, which we used to get two or 300000 through the county. Mm-hmm. But we, and there was an administration fee that you could tack on there of, say, 10%, $20,000. So what we did is we hired the Chamber of Commerce 
to run our community development block grant system. Uh, Nelson being the uh, president and the really working member of that group, that's how he got a little bit of money. Well, of course, back in the you know mid '80s, twenty thousand dollars was actually worth a couple yeah. of bucks, yeah. you know. Uh, and uh, so that's kind of how some of that stuff got started. You know, the theme of what you're talking about—that's kind of like the whole DNA of Marana, isn't it? People well, working together, figuring out ways to to come together as a you community. You know, what I'm trying to do with a lot of these podcasts is an oral history of components of this community, not just the town. Uh, today we're talking about Chamber right. of Commerce a little bit. You know, so the chamber grew a little bit, you know, and you got a few more members and a few more members and a few more members until they hired their first director it was a lady named renee brasil bierce who came from benson and she had kind of done a little chamber stuff up in benson and had worked with chambers in uh, cochise county from wilcox and safford and had a little bit of experience Uh, renee's husband was the head football coach for benson high school (laughs) and so renee came to the town of Marana uh, to work for the chamber. And so she was kind of the first person that That was chamber uh, hired uh, Mm -hmm. under under contract. And the chamber grew. What time frame are we talking about now? Oh, man. In the 90s? Early 90s, maybe, or, or something like that. And Renee was here for a few years. We had all kinds of social events, and we had people coming and doing and uh, eventually Renee left and a lady from Safford applied for the chamber executive position that lady's name was Janice Ann Lawson and she came to the chamber And she really professionalized the chamber. She belonged to the ACE group, Arizona Chamber Executives, and started interacting with other local chambers and other state chambers and getting more information and getting more more things into the community. Uh, I was very active in the chamber at that time, too, even as a council member at that time. Went to a lot of their events and supported local businesses and stuff like that. And I started spending a lot of time with the uh, chamber exec. To make a long story short. How'd that work out, Ed? To make a long story (laughs) short, about six months later, I married that lady. (laughs) Jan Jan Lawson Honey, she went by after, after that. The absolute love of my life. Mm-hmm. And she did so many things for the chamber. She professionalized it. She, you know, hooked us up with local organ, uh, uh, statewide organizations and, and had great events and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when the, the town bought an older building in North Marana, bought an older house, and uh, the chamber was going to be allowed to move in it. The deal we had, and I think I talked about it on an earlier podcast, if the chamber would stay in the building and stay active for five years, and they would act as our, not only as the Chamber of Commerce, which was kind of our economic development department, Mm -hmm. really, for the community at the time, but they were also the visitor center. And they had a big front room with all kinds of of information about local businesses or about the community and and about what was going on uh they did and we gave them the building Mm -hmm. and they they did really really well so like i said i liked the chamber so much i married the (laughs) director Uh, jan uh, eventually left and went to work for cottonwood properties uh david meal who did the Dub Mountain community and uh, a lot of projects up there. She worked there for a couple of years. 
The next person that came in was Kelly Maslin. And a lot of you probably, Kelly's still active in the, in the local area. Kelly was a director for a few years, did a phenomenal job, uh, expanded the chamber even more. And then eventually Kelly left the chamber and went to work for Comcast. And then later went to work for Arizona State University as a local representative. And she's now the deputy direct de- deputy economic development director for Pima County. Mm-hmm. And the director's from Marana as well. Right. He's Viscovi Chiorti. But so she moved on and they were looking for somebody to hire. And a guy named Ed Stolmaker's mm-hmm. name came up. I didn't know Ed. Uh, Jan did, even though she was a former director or you know, of the Chamber of Commerce and stuff. And she said, Ed is just a salt of the earth guy. You will love him. He's respectable and he's hardworking and everything like that. So Ed Stolmaker got the job and kept it for 13 years. Yeah. Ed was one of a kind. And just loved one that guy. And Ed even expanded the chamber. I mean, you know, it got to where the Miranda Chamber of Commerce was half the size of the Tucson Chamber mm-hmm. of Commerce, even though they had at that time 15 times more people. Yeah. And Ed really expanded the chamber. People loved him. And it actually until Ed's health got bad, and it has passed, but uh, just love that guy. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, said Ed's he was my brother. Kind. Ed's you know? one of a kind. And he was a one-of-a-time guy, and he helped expand the chamber. And we became, I mean, the chamber had like 500 members. I think the Tucson yeah. chamber had 1,300. What was, what was, did he come like in 04 or 05? Does I'm that sound not right? really Red, roughly, sure. Roughly. I mean, you're, frame. you're. You're asking yeah. me questions. I did yeah. prepare with all the names yeah. a little bit about. I think them. that's. I'm. I'm sure that's. We're in the time frame. Became personal friends with Ed and oh, his yeah. wife Marianne and his daughter Dory yeah. and different ones. Yeah. Uh, just a salt of the earth guy, and that's really when the chamber started becoming the sponsoring entity for the state of the town events which we, we've had everywhere from Star Pass in Miranda, they're off of Scenic Drive to different places. And the last several years, of course, have been at the Ritz-Carlton. Uh, really got us moving and really got us moving forward. Ed was just such a likable person. He was I a never great guy. met anybody that didn't like Ed. I mean, he was just, he, I mean... The name on the Chamber of Commerce building now yeah. is the Ed Stolmaker yeah, Center. He was just, you would expect that from, a, from an executive director of a chamber, but he was like the prototypical, wasn't he? He was, he like was the just model of phenomenal, what, phenomenal guy. Yeah, miss him a lot. And really helped us move forward. When, when Ed passed away, we hired a lady named Audra Winters out of Farmington, New Mexico, Chamber of Commerce, yeah. by the way. Uh, she came, and most of her tenure was during a couple years of COVID. Yeah. And it made it really, really difficult yeah. for her. She did a phenomenal job. Her husband was kind of an artist. In fact, I have a, a cactus made out of... Uh, pipe and a, and a rock and stuff like that, a saguaro cactus that I keep on my coffee table at my house. Audrey did a wonderful job. Yes, she did. Her and hands were tied. It was a really tough yeah, time to work, and we lost some members because people yeah. weren't working and businesses weren't making money and things weren't doing well. But she kept us on solid ground. Her and my wife, Tammy, were tight. Is that they, right? they worked, you know, the chamber was what they didn't have a, they didn't have a um, meetings for months because no one knew how to. And Tammy and Audra got together and we, we brought them into top. Um, summer of what, 21, I guess. And that's how the chamber got re 
rebooted was Tammy and Audra got together right in right in that room next door and said, "What can we do to help the chamber have a have a place?" And it was it was slim pickings there for a while because everybody was Audra still. Audra did a phenomenal job for us. She did, and the reason she left, her parents still lived in Farmington. And it was after COVID, and they were older, and they needed her. So she went back home to help take care of her parents. In the two, three years that she was here, she made a lot of friends and made a big impact. And there were a lot of tears shed right. when she made that. And everybody understood because well, it was she, family. Well, she but went back because of family. Everybody understood that. And she that, took but, over administration of a hospital in yeah, Farmington. I mean, yeah. she had a job. So, Audra, if you're listening to this, hey, we right. wish you well, and we have a lot of great memories of you being here. The next person that got hired is our current yeah. chamber director today, Amanda Wiggins. Just a bundle of energy. <laughs> she, yeah. She's done podcasting yeah. here. Yeah, she what has. a lovely young lady. And uh, she was so active. And is doing so much stuff to expand the chamber. The chamber has now leased a building from the town. And, uh, you know, it's the Ed Stowmaker Center. It's the Visitor Center, and it's the chamber. Uh, Amanda has expanded that. Uh, we now have veteran services in there. Uh, Tom Snay, who's the head of our planning uh, board, is, is doing that, but through the chamber. The visitor center has a lot of unique items in it now, and a lot of that's under Amanda's direction. They have a saddle that belonged to Linda McCartney, Paul yeah. McCartney's oh, yeah. wife. When they, you know, she was yeah. a local Tucson yeah. girl. They have a picture of Sherry Potter Servi, which was given to me, and I have loaned to them. Sherry Potter Servi, four-time world yeah. champion barrel racer, yeah. four-time world champion. Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> And they have a lot of stuff in there to bring people in. It's kind of becoming a museum and a place. But the biggest thing that Amanda does, she's so active in the community. Yeah. We just went to the second uh, building opening of Roche in Marana. They're bringing 140 employees yeah. to, to add to the 60. So they have 200 employees there now. Uh, I think I put people like Amanda are part of the reason that those companies are coming here. It's a, a wonderful business atmosphere and a wonderful leader. And, uh, you know, it, I hope Amanda is a young woman. I hope she stays 15 years yeah. or 20 years. You know, I just think she can do wonderful things for our community. The Chamber of Commerce does so much. It's kind of a economic I mean, uh, Kurt Woody is our economic mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. director, but the Chamber of Commerce is kind of our outreach for economic development. You know, you mentioned the, some really great names. Some I haven't haven't heard. Others I'm I'm familiar with. Others I know very well. From the beginning, because of that core value that Marana has, there's just it's hard to put a label on what that is. But we have a core thing here in Marana that you can just see the, the lineage of how it went from where it started in, what did you say, the early 80s right. to where we are now 40 years later. It was like uninterrupted. It, it grew, it snowballed, it compounded, but it started with those original people just coming right. together out of necessity more than anything else of how can we better promote our community. I'll even give you, uh, we were at Roche on Monday cutting the ribbon for their second building. Like I said, 140 employees. They do tissue diagnostic equipment for cancer screening. And I had gone with John Officer, council member officer, was my driver that day since I don't drive. <coughs> he made a comment about Amanda, which really stuck with me. He said, Amanda Wiggins is the reincarnation of Ed Stolmaker. Yeah. yeah, for anyone that knows that knew Ed, knows Ed, knew Ed, they know what we're talking about. Ed didn't know any strangers. 
he wasn't the loudest person in the room by any stretch of the imagination at all, but he, he just, I, I've stood right there in that spot right there and had some really deep conversations with Ed Stolmaker. Just him and I, two dudes. But you can do the same with Amanda. And you can do the same with Amanda. So you have a young woman who, incidentally, since she's become the chamber exec, got pregnant with her second child, yeah. Theodore. Yeah. I call him the Tedster. The Tedster. <laughs> and how this young woman, big pregnant through a lot of her first year, still came to all oh, the yeah. events. And then I would see her at an event with a baby carrier yeah. on her yeah, with a, a small baby. And she's got another one that's not... That's he's, four years old. He's not, uh, he's not a big Elliot guy. Elliot yeah. is his name. Uh, and Dylan's her husband. A wonderful exactly. family. Exactly. Really wonderful is. young family. He live in uh, Con- or, uh, Gladden Farms. I met them at Gladden Farms. And they are wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, she is going to move us to the next level again. She's looking for ways to expand the chamber. She's looking at the economic base. She's looking at inclusiveness of all the, all the uh, business industry in the community. And I just have, I, I, I love working with her. Mm-hmm. And she's, she's a very caring young woman. She called me on Veterans Day. Not to ask about funding for chamber or doing events she just said how you doing today mr mayor i'm calling to thank you as a veteran for serving our community didn't nothing about the town or the chamber or anything else and and what i'm saying that touched me yeah that's personal because this young woman very professional phenomenal leader also thinks about other things, too, and, and how she can have an very impact on our community. I mean, very, very personal. And I really look that the chamber is just going to explode moving forward, and we're going to do great things under her leadership. I would like to mention a couple of the other ladies. you got Tammy, who is her assistant. Rebecca's kind of in charge of new members and all that stuff. And they've hired a lady named Sally who I just love, and she's interested a lot in history of the community and kind of runs the visitor center and trying to bring in things from people in the community. Some things they're getting from me, but if other people have things of interest to the community, you know, call the the Chamber Chamber. of Commerce and talk to Sally. But, uh, you know, Amanda has just put a phenomenal team together. And we're going to go places in the community. This community is going places. It really is. I mean, again, when you're in it and you're inside it and watch it grow, from my perspective, and I've been a business owner in Moran and now for over 17 years, it's phenomenal, the growth. And a part of it's because of the people you just mentioned, Ed Stonemaker, Audra Winters, and Amanda Wiggins right. have been there leading the charge the whole way. And then we, we have the elected officials. I want to touch real quickly on that. We swore in four incumbents last night. That's correct. Ms. John, Comerford. Uh, Patty Comerford, John Post, Herb Kai, and John Officer. Thrilled to see those people reelected. Yes. Uh, very differing types of people serving our community, uh, you know, uh, Patty and I have been, I call her my sister. We have been great friends forever, but I have great respect for all of those folks. Uh, John Post was selected as vice mayor again, and John has done a great job at that. Uh, We're going in the right direction. And you can look at things nationally or statewide or wherever. The people that touch you the most, Mr. and Mrs., Marana, Mr. and Mrs. America, are your local elected yeah. officials. You guys have done a. I'm just, I'm just saying this. You guys have done a bang up job. You the, really have. Uh, the more I'm here, the more I dig into it. I've talked about this before. Your grandparents, Herb Kai's grandparents, right. John Post's grandparents, were 
legitimately the founders of this community right. and they they figured out ways to work with each other <laughs> not always agreeing with each other and different cultural backgrounds etc cetera, etc cetera. and yet here we are a hundred years from when some of those wonderful people first showed up in this valley and here we are you know for a fact and i'm, I'm going to ask put this in the form of a question but wouldn't your grandparents wouldn't herb's grandparents wouldn't john's grandparents all be thrilled they or would be don't you think they would be thrilled i i think what happened and and with the backgrounds that a lot of us had is once miranda started to grow and it was kind of transforming from a farming pr- primarily farming some ranching community into more urbanized areas and 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 that nature maintain the same values yeah, exactly and may and i think we have done that you have despite all odds the values are here let me ask a question this is a random one i've never asked you this and i think this is important because the geographical location of marana could not be better when did when did 10 come through are we talking mid '60s? About 1960, they came through. They tore the old high school down, which I don't think they'd be able to do today, but they did. It was the old Highway 84. Yeah, and they so about 1960. Okay, I don't know who was behind all that. I don't know who was representing us in in Congress at that time, but I know where I came from in the Midwest. Uh, that was a game changer when the freeway came in. When the freeway came through, it opened everything yeah. up. Yeah, it changed everything. I mean, it's the main street from Tucson to Phoenix. Yeah, it is. And we happened to be on 22 miles or 21 miles yeah. of that main street. Yeah, that was a game changer. You know what, Ed? It's been fun, as always. And now we are going to take a short break for the holidays. I'm oh, going to Reno. He's going to Reno. See my daughter, son-in-law, and youngest grandson. Uh, you know, going to have some fun, and uh, we'll be back the week after that. But uh, you know, really love doing these yes. podcasts. Well, I love yeah. talking about Marana and the people that got us to where we are today. And I get—I'm the guy that's kind of giving you the history. But there's a whole bunch of people that did a lot of hard work. And we're going to start meeting some of those people. Ed and I, we've talked about this, David, LTD, Local Miranda. We're going to start meeting some of those people as we move into 2023. We're going to start putting some faces to some of these names that Ed's brought up over the uh, last six months when we've been doing, or however long we've been doing this. And you're going to have them on as guests. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And we want the community to be involved. We're going to do some open houses and invite people to come in and be a part of some of these I, uh, I look podcasts. forward to that because I like to interact with people. And like I tell people, there's no question you can't ask. Right. You know, I go to a elementary school and ask the uh, people want to know how much I weigh, how old I am. <laughs> I answer the questions. Absolutely. They're honest questions yeah, from yeah, children. Yeah. But a lot of times, pe- something that really is affecting somebody or on their mind, I might not be aware of. Yeah. I want them to ask me that question. Yeah. If I have an answer, I'll give it to them. And you know what, Glenn? If I don't have the answer, I'll say uh, yes, I you don't know, but yeah. I will find out. And I will find out. You know out. what? I, I appreciate that. I know for a fact. I'm looking right at the viewer. Ed Honey and Patty Comerford. I'm not picking you guys out, but I am picking you guys out. <laughs> I have asked these folks over the years that we've known each other. You can testify to this. I mean, I've asked question after question after question, not only of you, other people in the community and i'm going to tell you i didn't always get the answer i wanted but i got an answer and i got it quick right you know what happy holidays to you happy Happy holidays to you as thanksgiving be safe again localmoranda.com um local miranda facebook pages uh also uh, Arizona or MoranaAZ.gov. If you want to talk to ed all that information is there and i want to give a shout out to our newest sponsor gross busters thanks guys thanks jason and jessica for being a part of the network you guys have a great week